Hey guys, Bruce coming at you. Welcome to my kitchen once again. Today's a Saturday. We're just kind of relaxing around the house, me and the dogs. My wife's out working. And, uh, well, the people down at the Manor Legion, the American Legion, asked me to uh, make a pot of chili for tomorrow's Steeler game. So I'm like, yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. I love making this chili. Um, so I think we should get into the mood, like, right about now. I don't know. We're cooking chili. I'm not doing that Gordon Ramsay shit today. Let's try this one more time. Okay, that is much better. Anyway, like I was saying, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Bruce, and I like to cook. I've been a chef for 30-some years, blah, 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 blah. If you ever heard any of my other videos, you can see that. Today, I want to do something special, though. I'm cooking my chili. Usually, I cook this maybe twice over the season. I've already cooked it three times for the good people down the Legion. And I love doing it because my wife doesn't eat chili, so when I cook it, I get to eat some. So anyway, everybody's asking me for the recipe. Like, Bruce, how do you do it? I have won a couple contests with, with this recipe I'm going to show you. Um, it's, it's a good chili. It's easy to make. Anyone can do it. A little time consuming to do it the way I'm going to show you today, but if you listen carefully, I'm going to try to tell you some shortcuts on how you can make this uh, in less time. Uh, a couple corners you can cut, and you're still going to get a good chili out of it. So I was trying to think, well, maybe I'll just do both versions at the same time, but then I'll be swimming in chili, which is way too much. So anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, look, just a little story about this chili. When I was a little kid, uh, my dad would make this for my mom. My mom loved chili, whereas my wife doesn't love chili. So my dad started, he had very few things he, could, he would cook, like certain things he was in charge of. You know, like I grew up, my dad was the guy who was in charge of the grill. Only he was allowed to use the grill. Yeah, that's, that's just the kind of family I had. And there's nothing wrong with that. People, some people are still that way today. The man has to cook the grill. Me, I believe anybody can cook. Anybody can do what I'm going to show you to do now. This is my modification on his chili recipe. Um, I prefer my stuff way spicier. So we'll get into that. And uh, if you don't like a spicy chili, uh, give it a look anyway. You can always omit some of the stuff I'm going to put in to tone it down a little bit. So let's get started and talk about the ingredients that we're going to put in today. Because I went out and I'm trying to use as much fresh stuff as possible. Because these guys are mostly veterans, so I want them to have a good chili. Anybody, like I said, anybody can make chili. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can even go, where did I put it? Here it is. You can even get these little chili packets, and they have a recipe how to make chili. And it's not a bad chili, but we're not using those today. We're cooking this completely from scratch, and if it sounds like something you might like, give it a try at home. And this video is going to be lengthy today, because it's a long process. So, if you got to fast forward through it, try to get the, the, the good points. All right, let's go over those ingredients now. Okay, like I was saying, here's the fresh ingredients I'm using today. I'm going to use some canned stuff too, but this is the fresh stuff I took the time to cut today. I cut all this stuff in about a half an hour. Um, I, I wanted to use as much fresh as possible for the, for the veterans. So, uh, as you can see, I got about, I use the, the rules of threes. And uh, that's just so I can keep track of it. I got uh, three medium onions diced up there on the top left. I got, that's about actually six tomatoes diced up. So I broke my rule of three there. Three cloves of garlic, fresh garlic, of course, and I minced that. Um, quarter inch dice on three jalapeno peppers, three banana peppers, and in the center there, that's a cubanella pepper. I didn't have one for a display because I had to put it in there. So like I said, three, 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 and six. So that's an easy way for you to remember. Uh, there is no recipe for me to write down, so you're going to have to just listen to what I say. All right, let's go to the canned stuff, because I did cheat and use some canned things today. Once again, using a rule of threes, I like to put three kinds of beans in my chili. Um, you, can put a, you can put whatever kind of beans you want in it. Um, even the type of bean doesn't matter, as long as it's a, either a chili bean or a kidney bean. Um, you know, just get them on, on the shelf at the grocery store. It's easy. It's, it's really up to you. But today, using a rule of three, I got three kinds of beans. I got some tomato paste here and two cans of tomato sauce. And I, I have a feeling we might need a little bit more tomato sauce, but for right now, I got two cans. Now, my beans, they all come in their own sauces. I like to dump the beans into a strainer. And as you can see, there's three kinds of beans in there. I like to dump them in the strainer and let their juices drain out in a clean sink, of course. That puddle was from the, the sauces that was on here. It's nothing gross, I promise. So, yeah, I'll let this sit for about a half an hour. I don't rinse them off because I want them to keep a little bit of their flavor, but I do let all the syrup and stuff just drain right through and down the sink. 
So and the only other thing we need that I don't have picture is my ground beef. We're going to use about two and a two and a half pounds of ground beef today. And uh, that's actually the first thing we're going to start with. So let's get started with that. Okay, before we get started, you're going to want to get yourself a nice pan, of course, to start in. Now, I have a couple pans sitting here that I want to show you. This is the one I want to use. It's the biggest one to have, but it's also stainless steel. And this is actually a pressure cooker, but we're not going to use a pressure cooker function. I just, it's a nice size pan. It's stainless steel. I like having a lot of surface area on the bottom for whenever I brown my meat and my onions, which is the very first thing we're going to do. So, it, I just prefer stainless. Uh, it doesn't taint your food. Um, it heats nicer. Now, a lot of people know that I use a lot of, I do a lot of cooking on with Rusty here, the iron skillet. Since we're making chili and it's very spicy, I prefer not to use the cast iron because what happens, the, the acids and the hotness and the tomato paste and tomato sauce especially soak into your pan and take, take out the seasoning. Now, if anybody knows anything about a cast iron pan, you don't, you don't really wash it in soap. You never wash it in soap. You wash it and you season it with some oil and it never <sighs> watch someone's video on the cast iron skillet i think i talked about it in the other ones i'm not going to make this video any longer on that but that's why i don't use cast iron some people will use it in their chilies especially if they're cooking over an open fire which uh i don't do one pan you don't want to use this is aluminum now i use this pan for years and i'll still use it occasionally to make certain soups but for chili, I won't because once again, the, the acid and the aluminum, it tends to give it a, a, almost, of a, almost a metal flavor whenever I'm done. And not to mention the bottom of this pan, so easy to stick stuff to it and scorch it. Um, really, the only thing I use this pan now for is my chicken noodle soup, which I'll be doing another video about that at a later date. But try to stay away from aluminum. Now, some people want to use Teflon. Now, I don't have a problem with Teflon. That's why my dad did it back in the day, too. He had a big, big Teflon pot. Um, I just don't use Teflon. I, I prefer the old school method with the stainless steel. So, with that said, let's get started with the actual cooking part of this video, and I'll shut up now. <laughs> well, like I was saying, this is about two and a half pounds of ground beef. And what we're going to do is we're going to brown that off. And when it's halfway cooked, we're going to put in some onions. It helps to turn the gas on, Bruce. There we go. So... I got my ground beef first, just turned it on. I like to put some uh, fresh ground pepper on it. And if I was to guess how much I'm using right now, I'd say probably about maybe two teaspoons. Yeah, I might bet that's about two teaspoons. I don't know if it's showing up on camera here, but it's dust on the top of it. And then just a little bit of salt. You don't want to ever go heavy on the salt. Um, well, this particular time, we're not using any beef broth or anything like that, so we don't have to worry about adding salt. But I just put about maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of salt on this just to get it going. And I'm going to start browning this off, and we're going to go from there. Okay, we're at about two minutes in here. I'm sauteing this in my stainless steel pan over, and I actually have it on high right now, but I'm sitting here stirring it so it doesn't scorch. About two minutes, it's about halfway cooked. Now what I want to do is I want to add my onions, which I've already diced up. I spent all morning um, cutting these by hand. Usually I run them through a food processor, but for chili I want them to be big chunks. These are about, oh, I'd say about a half inch diced. I kind of got a little OCD and carried away with it today because I um, haven't practiced my knife skills in a while. But we're going to continue massaging that with the onions in there. We can throw our garlic in now too. That's three cloves of garlic like I was saying before. And we're gonna let that finish cooking. Like I said, it's been two minutes. I'm gonna finish this and uh, see what we got. Okay, here we are about five minutes later and I have made a mistake. I thought I was recording on the last step I just did. And I wasn't, so I had to I'll just explain what I did, it's no big deal. This is smoked paprika. I just put a dusting all over it. As you can see, it's turning my juices all nice and red. Uh, this is not a spicy paprika, it's just a generalized uh, smoked paprika you can get in any any grocery store. Um, I wish I had the Hungarian paprika that we used when I made the goulash in my last video. But that was hers and she took it with her. So now I got some cayenne pepper here. This is where you have to decide how hot you want it. Oops. Got a little damp there. This is where you got to decide how hot you want it. Me, I want it pretty spicy. So 
I want to infuse this meat and these onions with the cayenne pepper. And of course, what's chili without chili powder? And it's got a little sprinkle. We ain't using a sprinkler. We're dumping it in there. And honestly, what I'm about how much I'm putting in here, if I was to guess, I'd say about three tablespoons. To start with. You can always put more in later. But remember, if you don't like spicy things, be careful how much of those things you put in. But we haven't even begun to work on the spice yet. That's just a generalized chili flavor. So I'm mixing this up. And another thing I wanted to say, normally what I'm doing here, I do in my big pan. But today, so you guys can see what I'm doing, I decided to cook this ahead of time in my uh, stainless steel skillet so you can actually watch it cook. Now you see with all those spices in there, it turned everything nice and red. I mean, it's starting to look like chili meat now. And if, as long as you know your meat's done, if you want to give it a taste right now, you get an idea what it's going to taste like. Uh, but keep in mind, chili's one of those things that the longer it sits, the, the uh, more the flavors are going to come out. So if you think it's hot now, it's going to be really hot later. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dump this into the big pan now. Also, if you want to drain your meat, now is the time to do it. You could put it in a strainer and just drain the grease off. I choose not to. I just think it gives a better flavor. So we're just going to go ahead and put this in our big pot where I wanted to cook it the first place. There it goes. And here's something I'm going to teach you real quick too. You see the bottom of my stainless steel pan has some spices and things and pepper and some meat residue stuck to the bottom. I'm going to show you how to use that in your chili without scraping it off like I just did. And what we're going to do is we're heating our pan back up a little bit. We are going to get just a little bit of water. You can use beef broth if you want to, but I don't want to put beef broth in my chili. I'm just using just a titch of water, not a lot. I'm letting this heat up and I'm going to hit it with the water. Now see how that water's starting to boil? It's actually pulling those spices up off the bottom. Take your spatula, flatten it down, and you can get everything up and mix it into your water. And you see the water, of course, is turning red because that's your spices. Now this isn't burnt, it's just kind of like dried out. So, and also I like to use a slotted spatula whenever I do this. But it scrapes that up. Now I got a nice little, almost like a broth type thing, but that's going right in the chili. So we don't lose all the flavoring. And that's part one. Now we're going to work on, turn the heat off, we are going to work on our hotness, the peppers, the fresh peppers that I showed you. So let me go get those and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're going to do our peppers. And as you can see, I have rubber gloves on. Very important. I'm going to explain to you why, as I'm doing this, why I'm wearing rubber gloves at this point in time. You might not want to do this part. If you want to, you can take the peppers and dump them directly into the chili right now. But... I want, the, I want the flavor of those peppers to come out. So right now I'm heating up my skillet on about a medium high heat. And I'm going to put a little oil in the pan to cook them in. Uh, right here I'm using olive oil. You don't have to use olive oil. You can use vegetable oil. You can use butter if you want to. Anything you want. You can make it your own. I just happen to have olive oil sitting there. So now, this is the part that I'm going to explain to you why you need rubber gloves. And you might even want a gas mask for it. These are hot peppers. I got your the jalapenos, cubanillas, and the banana peppers. When they hit that oil, they're going to splatter and they're going to throw their juices and aroma everywhere. And I'm good. I'm about to mace myself. You're going to see. So if you hear me sneezing or sniffling, you you even hear the dog sniffling. It's pretty funny. But this is how you get the best flavor out of your um, out of your peppers. I I have to turn this fan on. I know it's noisy. Hopefully you can hear me. I'll speak up. There goes one pepper, two pepper. And these are the ones that are going to get you. Three peppers. Speaking of pepper, we'll put a little more cracked pepper in there. This is about a half a teaspoon. This time I'm going to put salt on it to help it sweat the peppers a little more. Now the gloves are in case you get that juice on your hand. You do not want to get that juice on your hand. If you get that juice on your hand, you'll rub your eyes and it's a nightmare. And you can wash your hands all you want to, but whoa, here it comes. You can wash your hands all you want to, but this juice is still going to stay in your skin for a day. Uh, cutting them is even worse. As you can see, these are all cut uniform in a half inch cuts. Like I said, I'm a little OCD in my cutting today, practicing my nice skills I haven't used in a while. And so they are, yours don't have to be this perfect. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, I was really OCD when I did this. Okay, <laughs> yeah. 
And like I said, keep your, do not try to smell out of this pan. You'll regret it. So, and make sure you have your fan on. And like I said, you can even skip this step if you don't want to. You can just throw them right in the chili, because we're going to simmer the chili for quite a while anyway, and it gets the same effect. But this crisps them up a little bit, kind of around the edges, brings the flavor out even more. And I'm just blanching them now. I'm not going to cook them the whole way through. This is in real time. They've been on here for about a minute and a half on the high heat. Killing my heat. And then I'm going to dump my peppers in this mess here. And you, you know, that's the steam you don't want to inhale, believe me. Believe me. But anytime you're cutting hot peppers or cooking with hot peppers, wear your gloves. Now, if I was to wipe my eyes with this glove right now, my eyes would be burning. So, all right, let me get ready here for the next step. And we'll be in business. Now, <laughs> all right, I might as well show you what I'm doing because I made this mistake too. Take your gloves off, grab it right here, out one over the other, touch the inside of the glove, and get rid of them as soon as possible because you don't want to have a problem. Okay, so we have everything in here, like I said. We got our ground beef in there, our onions, and all them hot peppers. We got the garlic, all the... Everything I showed you is in here right now, and I got the big pan I'm using. Let me give you a quick peek of this. You can look in there. It looks pretty good to me. Ooh, I got to wait for those peppers again. And my, my nose is running. That, that cleared my sinuses out. But you got to do it like that to bring the flavor out. Now what I'm going to do next is, these are the six diced tomatoes that I cut up earlier. I'm going to throw them in there. That's that. And then we're going to put in, excuse my back to the camera. We're starting out with two cans of tomato sauce. Any generic sauce will do. I, I rinse the can out with a little bit of water. Just a little bit, just to make sure I get all of it. Here's the second can. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have to get a third can of tomato sauce in there, I'll bet. I'll bet you. All right, now we're going to put our tomato paste in there. As soon as I can find something to scoop it out with. There we go. This is a large size can of tomato paste. This is another thing you really, if you don't want to use it, you don't really have to. I just got in the habit of using it. It, uh, it thickens it up a little bit, but with the way we're making this, we really don't have to worry about it being too thick. So I'm just going to go and put the whole can in because I know we're making a huge batch. Like I said, I already know I'm going to have to get another can of tomato sauce and put it in there which is fine and we're going to give it a stir now it's all still really super thick right now so at this point you can decide you can put some beef broth in it if you want to thin it out or you can let it simmer till it gets thicker because when it gets hotter that tomato sauce will actually get a little bit more runnier i'm actually going to put another can of tomato sauce in this okay i'm back i had another can of tomato sauce i'm just going to go and dump that in there now i'm finding it's still a lot thick because I used a lot of goodies in there. I tried to put extra meat in there. Uh, it's really thick as it is. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And what I want to do is I want to bring this up to a simmer. Not quite a boil. Just a simmer. And if you have a crock pot, this is a good time to switch it to your crock pot to bring it up to that temperature. Um, right now, I'm just kind of mixing the ingredients together gently, so I'm not bust up anything. I have not put the beans in yet, because once you put the beans in, you start stirring it, it can bust your beans up, and I, I like to keep them as whole as possible. So what I am going to put in now is, oh, I forgot to tell you about this one. One of my secret ingredients. This is Southern Comfort, two shots. You can use Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, any kind of whiskey you want to, Bloop, right in there. Now don't worry about the alcohol, you're not going to get anybody drunk. By the time we're done with this, it will have uh, all that alcohol just evaporate. You're going to just have a faint hint of the whiskey in there. It's hard to describe unless you've tasted it. That's the top secret ingredient that I never told anybody about either. But that's that. Okay, now I have everything mixed together. And honestly, that last can of tomato sauce seems to have made it pretty good. I don't know if you can see... I don't know if I can show the consistency on the camera, but as you can see, it's it's got about the little thinner consistency of chili, if you're used to seeing it, if you can see that. And this is going to be a lot of chili, too, so I'm putting it back on my heat. The reason it's over here is this is, every stove has one burner that's larger than the rest, and that's where this one is on this guy. 
So we have all our ingredients in except for the beans. And here they go. I showed them to you earlier. We're going to dump our beans in there. That's three cans of whatever kind of beans you like. Now there are people out there that don't like beans in their chili. And that's okay. You can do that. I'm mixing the beans in there. Now you're probably saying to yourself, or maybe not, I don't know. You're probably wondering how hot this is right now. I don't know. I will taste it later because if you keep tasting it, you're going to kill your taste buds and then it won't make any difference. But what I do not know is I need more chili powder. Like I said, this is supposed to be a spicy chili. I'm still feeling the effects on my face from those uh, peppers. I mean, pretty much it just maced myself when I cooked them. But like I said, you can leave that step out. You don't have to cook them. You can throw them in there and let it simmer. I just prefer to get the most out of the flavor. So that's a little more chili powder. Now you're probably thinking, Bruce, that's going to be like really like melt your face off hot. And you're right if I let it go like this. There's two things, one or two things I will do when I make this chili. And it's also one of my secret ingredients. Not many people have actually figured out what I do. But I'm sweating. I got, I got to wipe my face off for those peppers. I'm telling you, man, it's bad. All right, I'm trying to move along as fast as I can. Apples. What you can do is dice up some apples and throw them in there right now. And what that'll do, and we'll let them simmer. The apples will actually disintegrate if you make them small enough. And what that'll do is that takes, you're going to get, when you eat this chili, you're going to get it real hot at first. And then the apple flavor is going to seep in afterwards to like calm your palate, as they say. If you don't have apples, which I don't, we're going to use applesauce today. And this is a... Alright, this is a three pound jar of applesauce. I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm going to use about, uh, let's call it two cups. There, yep, that's about two cups. I know, I don't measure anything, but once you cook as long as I do, it just doesn't become a problem anymore. Stir that in real good. Now, like I said, at this point, you could be in a crock pot. Stir it up real good and you're done. Just let it sit for about four or five hours if you're using the fresh apples. You can get it done in two hours if you're using applesauce because it doesn't have to disintegrate. This particular pot's going to take a while to come to, to heat. So I'm estimating about an hour to simmer this to the point where I can turn it down and sit, just keep it on low. So uh, I guess we'll pause it here and see what's next. Okay, it took about maybe... 10 minutes to get this just to start boiling and that's what I wanted. I want it nice and hot. I had it on medium high heat up until right now. I'm going to give this a quick stir. I think we've got a nice consistency going on here. Nice aroma coming out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cover it. I mean, this, is, this is a pressure pot. Or excuse, uh, oh, what do you call this? Um, pressure cooker. This is a pressure cooker. I'm not using it, that, that function, I'm just putting a lid on there, uh, basically to keep it warm and keep it hot and so this stuff doesn't splatter all over my uh, stove. I'm going to turn my heat down to a simmer, a simmer setting, just a little bit above low for my stove. Um, this is, like I said, if I had a crock pot, I would put it in a crock pot right now and let it sit for about six hours in a crock pot on low and then it would be delicious. And originally I made too much and it's not going to fit in my crock pot, so we're going to do it the old fashioned way today. Alright, turn it down to low. I'm going to come back about every half hour and give it a stir. Because now what I want to do is I want those fresh tomatoes to break down, I want the beans to cook through. And it should take about, doing it this way, probably maybe four hours, I'm guessing. We're going to find out. But anyway, that's the step we're at right now. I brought it to a boil. I'm reducing the heat down to low. I'm just going to simmer and I'm going to come back every... 20 minutes to a half an hour, give it a stir to make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom. With this particular pan, I'm not really worried about it. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's where we stand now. So yeah, here I was all worried about this not fitting in my crock pot, which it wouldn't. I completely forgot that I have a roaster pan that I usually only use for um, turkeys at Thanksgiving and holidays and whatnot. So I'm making a change of plans. I'm putting that in the roaster pan to simmer the rest of the day. I got it set in about 250-300. I'm going to check it in a little while, and if it's too hot, I can always turn it down. But that's basically all I can tell you. This is going to be beautiful in a couple hours. I'm just going to leave it in this roaster pan for 
I don't know, four to six hours until I think it's right. It's pretty much up to you. I, do, I am cooking it a little bit longer because of all the fresh ingredients. I want them to melt. If you per se, like let's say you used uh, canned tomatoes, it wouldn't take as long, but I used the fresh tomatoes and the fresh peppers, same with those. If you happen to use jarred ones, which you can do that too. It's a good thing about chili. You can put anything you want in it. So yeah, we're gonna leave this sit for a few hours. Like I said, I got it set on about 250, 300. I might have to raise, I might have to lower it, but we're just gonna let that simmer and have some chili goodness whenever it's all done. And I guess it's probably time for the outro after this. See you in a minute. Okay, well, it has been about four hours, maybe a little less. I got a little anxious. But anyway, I had it simmering the whole time at uh, about 250 300. I, I brought it up to a boil again in the roaster, which only took about five minutes. And I let it sit for about four hours in that roaster. And I just turned it off and I looked at it. And I put a picture up before I sat down so I couldn't fit it in the frame. But now is the time to taste it. I, I haven't tasted it yet. So I like to put a little cheddar cheese on top of mine. And I like to have little oyster crackers with it. So let's do that. We're going to taste and see if this is any good. The dogs are sitting here wanting something. They ain't going to want this. So here we go. Let's try it. There's the heat. I'm definitely tasting all those peppers we put in there. It's good. It's it's got it like the mouth. It's got the the heat's coming at you, but you, I can taste the apple sauce in the background too. It's kind of calming it down. It's like a hot and sweet at the same time. I feel it could be a little spicier for my taste, to be honest with you. But I'll tell you, this is my dinner. <laughs> so, cheers. If you give this a try, you can make your own shortcuts and things like that. I took a lot of time cutting the vegetables today because, well, I don't know. I just got in the mood. I felt like doing it. So, it took me about a half hour, maybe 45 minutes to cut up all the vegetables. You can run through a food processor, too, because... Honestly, some of these, the tomatoes, didn't matter how big they were. They all turned to mush in the, like they're supposed to. And uh, the beans are cooked well. Um, like I said, I drained the juice off the beans so it doesn't taint my sauce. But you can leave it in if you want. That's the good thing about chili. You can do anything you want with it. If you think it'll taste good, give it a try. If this isn't baking where everything has to be precise. My wife is the baker. So anyway, I hope the guys at the Legion like this tomorrow uh, for the big Steeler game. I'm actually not a big football guy. I'm not a big sports guy. I like my I like Pittsburgh Pirates. I like the old the old school Pittsburgh Pirates because they're terrible now. Steelers are doing okay this year, and um, I'm enjoying watching the games, especially with my wife because she's the one that yells at the screen. Um, I don't do that. I sit there and enjoy the game, but she's the one that freaks out yelling at the screen. When she sees this, she's going to get mad at me. But anyway, that's that's how I make my chili. Uh, a lot of people locally have asked me. You know, there is no recipe to actually write down. Just basically whatever you can get at the grocery store that you think might go good in it. Um, I do keep with three, I try to put three different kinds of hot peppers. My little rule of three I explained earlier. Um, it's not hard to make. It it's, can be time consuming. Um, the shortcuts, if you wanted to use all canned vegetables, uh, you can cut your cook time down a lot. But I like using the fresh as much as possible. I mean, I used to have a garden and I would take the tomatoes and make my own tomato sauce too. But uh, I don't do that anymore. Uh, at least I haven't had a chance to because I've been working so much. But anyway, I hope you like your chili. Uh, Leave a comment down, sit down, the comments, questions, you know, whatever. And remember, there is no right or wrong way to make this. It's whatever you want to put in there, whatever you like. And I hope you have a good day, and go Steelers. I'm going to get the rest of this. You ain't getting any. It ain't going to be good for you. Come here, you want a cracker? Want a cracker? Come here. It's a cracker. Good boy. Oh, this is still on.